Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing my theatre book tour 2020. Now I'm sorry that um, Friday's video came up on Saturday. I was in Dawlish with Ed and I was using the internet from my phone and it was a nightmare and it took so long. It was a joke to upload. Um, in hindsight, Ed mentioned after I'd managed to finally upload it, you should have just gone to a cafe and use their Wi-Fi. I didn't think of that. But there we go. <laughs> so what I will do is I'll do like a pan up and pan down so you can actually see what my bookshelf looks like. My cat just knocked one of my lights over. You're more of a nuisance than the dog. You knocked the battery out. Sorry about that. Cat decided to nurse one of my lights and knock it over. She's just here. You might or may not be able to see some ears. Yes, come on. Come on. Do you want to sit in my lap? She's being over cuddly because obviously I was away for a few days, so. So, I will do a pan up pan down so you see what my bookshelf looks like. It's on a different bookshelf to last time. This is like a, a dedicated theatre bookshelf. So top shelf is DVDs, which is literally all Shakespeare, because I love Shakespeare. Next is plays, and then underneath there, which is this row, is all fairy books. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of room for plays, and I'm thinking that, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I've got a whole load of stuff by my bed. <laughs> So I'm basically going to go through and show you guys what I have. I actually keep my, <laughs> my National Trust handbook there as well. And some, uh, was it programmed? On this shelf, the top shelf, first thing you'll see is the Actors and Performers Yearbook 2017. I don't update it too often because generally it's still quite relevant. It's also, they're really expensive. How much is this? Doesn't actually say. Yeah, this is generally like 20 quid and yeah. I've also got highlighters because everyone needs highlighters and then this comes from one of my books. Right, let's go to DVDs of what I have. I've got King Lear, this is yet to be opened, I can't remember who got that for me. Um, Midsummer Night's Dream, which is amazing, I love this one. Shakespeare's Globe, As You Like It. This is one of my favourite films of all time, but I love this film, it's so, so good. If you haven't seen this, watch it. Then I've got Shed Loads of Macbeth, one, two, three. Four, that was when I was doing it at school, so I've got all those from then. I have a copy of Cymbeline here. And now I've got something that I do love, The Hollow Crown. I love this, I think it's such a good adaptation. Henry the Fourth is parts one and part two are some of my favourite histories of Shakespeare. So I'd highly recommend this. I think Tom Hiddleston's amazing and a lot of the other actors. Last but not least of DVDs is my omnibus of Shakespeare that my mum got for me for my birthday day two years ago and I haven't opened it yet you know when something's too pretty to open this is too pretty to open <laughs> I really love this um it's literally the entire Shakespeare collection from the globe I've got my National Trust handbook 2019 <laughs> I keep my National Trust books on this shelf too I love National Trust if you're not a member please go and be a member they do some incredible conservation work and I love them okay let's go on to the play shelf the one you're all waiting for let's be real here what does Imogen de Sanqua have on her bookshelf so first of all I've got a couple of notebooks two from the National Theatre they haven't been used yet and I got this in France because I just needed a notebook and did I write anything in it? No, it hasn't been used. So three unused notebooks that I will use whilst writing notes for plays and things. In fact, I might actually use that one for um, Theatre Book Club because I like the colour and it. I needed a notebook for that. So actually, I'm really glad I've done this now because I've gone and looked through my bookshelf. <laughs> Next is Death of a Salesman by Arthur Miller. I got this in New York. So this is like more of a, an American style. The styles between American prints and UK prints are very different, I find. Anyway, I don't know if I'm Americans you find that as well or anyone in the UK who owns an American um, this cost me three dollars it's so cheap like it's a joke because here you're paying ten pounds a book um, and the pound is more than the dollar so it's actually really expensive yeah but I haven't read that yet is that bad um, there's a few in here I haven't read because I go oh I don't want to read it because I don't want to ruin it for myself that's why I haven't finished the Throne of Glass series yet because I'm like I don't want it to end I have a real complex about. Next is Freak by Anna Jordan. So I picked this one out for a speech. Anything with a little taggy in it is usually means because I picked it for a speech. I've then got The Ferryman by Jez Butterworth. A friend recommended this to me, so I picked it up. Next is one I think from my charity shop. Yeah, it's from a charity shop. Late Victorian Plays, 1890 to 1914, edited by George Rowell. Then I've got The Belfast Girls by Jackie McCarrick. 
I think I got this. Yeah, I did. I got this in Samuel French before it shut down. And then I've got two copies of Six Plays for Girls by Florence Priestley, which is a really nice old book. I don't know how I've got two copies. I've got Short Plays for Amateur Acting by Mrs. Barry Payne. I believe I nicked this from a pub in Oxfordshire. Yes. I saw it and I was like, oh, that's cool. I love old stuff. Edward Albee's Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Uh, this is like a proper like 1990s version, I think. In fact, probably older than that. This one's 1960s, actually. So this is a 1960s copy. Next, I've got, because I love David Bowie. He is like, I was so upset when he died. You have no idea. Uh, Lazarus by David Bowie. Next is R.C. Sheriff's Journey is End. This makes me cry. I love it. I worked on it. I didn't perform it, but I used it as a as a workshop piece before. And I think it's amazing. If you haven't read it, go and read it. Next, of course, you must read this because I'm original cast. The Wardrobe by Sam Holcroft. Uh, I got to perform this at the National Theatre in London, which was pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, just, just go and read it, this one. Next is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde. This was my copy you can see I've highlighted in it. It doesn't look like it's mostly highlighted because a lot of it's like, yeah. Because I played Cecily, I did that in the UK and in America. That was amazing. Next is, again, Duncan McMillan. I love Duncan McMillan because obviously we're doing lungs. Guys, if you haven't got your copy of lungs, get your copy of lungs. Obviously for Theatre Book Club because this is amazing. This is why we've got Theatre Book Club so we can all discuss and learn. This is People, Places and Things. I love this. Cannot describe to you how much I love this book. Where have I got? Oh, it was my order. <laughs> I had this for then I sometimes I keep like order stuff in, in books just so I'm like oh okay that was where I got it 2016 I have had this since four years that's scary it is really good if you want something interesting to read especially when it comes to mental health read this it's incredible next is another one if you want to see my review of it I will link it down below this is skinny cat by Isley Lynn this is all about female sexuality and the struggles that we sometimes face and I think that's incredible next up I've got is the collections omnibus which is Basically, so the wardrobe, which I formed at National Theatre in London, was part of the Connections program, which it's the NT Connections, it's the National Theatre Connections program, and basically it is where there are ten plays, young companies or young or schools or whatever go around around the country, pick one and compete to be chosen to perform it at the National Theatre in the little festival that they do, and we won, and we were really lucky, and we got to perform it, and it was amazing, so it was really good, yay. And this is my copy, Sam Holcroft, because I did get Sam to sign it. There you go, I don't know if you can see, but she did sign it for me, and that's a lovely memory from 2014. Everything's so long ago, I feel like I'm getting so old, because it's my birthday next Wednesday, I'm 23. 23, when was I ever supposed to be 23? Next up is an incredible historical piece. If you haven't read this, go and read it. I keep saying this about all the books, but I love them all. This is The White Devil by John Webster, and this is an incredible piece. I did a speech from this, which is Flamineo. I love Flamineo, good old Flamalam. And it's just incredible because I don't want to spoil it, but I don't want to give you a good indication of it. It is basically it is centering somewhat around Flamineo and good old Flamalam, and Flamalam basically thinks he's a bit of a uh, like a psychopath, and then it turns out he's not really a psychopath and is grappling with with his actions, it's very good. What, well, like, go read it. This is from, like, 1600s. When was this actually released? That is a good question. Because I don't, I don't know the exact date. When was this originally published? I will see if I can find out and I'll write it. Next up is Boys by Ella Hickson. Again, another one, there's a brilliant speech in this. Uh, female speech. Obviously, most of the speeches I pick out are female. Flamini is a guy, but I love the speech, so. Um, thank you, Jack, for put me onto that one by the way. Ella Hickson's Boys is incredible, go read it. It's really good. Very interesting, especially for like women around my age. It's really interesting in terms of relationship dynamic to read. Next up is Fleabag by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. If you haven't seen this on BBC or read it, where have you been hiding? Like, let's be real. Next up is Contemporary Monologues for Women, which is edited by Trilby James. Trilby James tutored me at the Ryder Summer School. She's lovely and amazing and knows her stuff and I admire her. Bull by Mike Bartlett. Bunny by Jack Thorne. The only thing that annoyed me about this is the fact that it is 
38 pages long and I paid nine pounds for it. Nine pounds, 38 pages, just saying. Let the Right One In, which is based on the novel and film by, I can't pronounce it, but I'm really sorry. John Ajivar Lindqvist. I'm dyslexic, I'm really sorry. Adapted for the stage by Jack Thorne. This is actually my friend's copy. I still need to give this back to him. I haven't given this back to him since the last video I did, and that was three years ago. Oh my God. Next one is Traveling Lights by Nicholas Wright that was at the National Theatre. I haven't read, did I? No, I have, have I read this? I read this a very long time ago. I don't really remember it. I might reread it and learn some more. I've got two copies of Punk Rock. Very good, very interesting for school dynamics in terms of relationships and other people and bullying and stuff go go read that a view from the bridge by arthur miller that is another one on my reading list there's a few here that i should have read and haven't read yet i'm okay with that it's finding time and being in the right headspace to want to learn about it and absorb it in i think that's really important so don't be upset with yourself if you haven't read like greats there's time then we've got arthur miller's the crucible i love the crucible you have no idea i've been to salem i have seen the graves i like i love it I love it. Next up, we've got three by Tennessee Williams. We've got A Streetcar Named Desire, which I love. Cat on Hot Tin Roof, also love. And The Glass Menagerie, also love. Next up is Nell Gwynn by Jessica Swal. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm really sorry if I, I've got it wrong. Next up is my copy of Julius Caesar from when I was at college and I never gave back. Sorry. Next, I've got poetry books, both by Alan Alberg. Um, please Mrs. Butler and heard it in the playground. I think that I did these when I was younger. Next up is Alan Bennett's The History Boys. I have worn the ties that they wore in this, that's in this photo, um, which is really cool because we wore it for the wardrobe at the National Theatre because we had a National Theatre wardrobe done for that. So that was really exciting. I love this. Again, it's going through school type um, scenario, but it is about the pressures and again, more relationship stuff, it's, it's very good. Next up, we've got A Woman in a Suitcase by um, F. Thomas Vincent. Uh, Mr. Vincent very kindly sent me copies uh, in the post. He's very kindly signed in there for me as well, so um, thank you. And this is very interesting. I will link um, my review below to this. I loved it. It was very weird, but good, and um, there were so many hidden little things in it. I loved it. Next is one of the ones I last reviewed, I think. This is Home I'm Darling by Laura Wade. I love this. It is about um, a woman wanting to live like it's the 1950s. She doesn't want to have to work. She doesn't want, she wants to make a nice home. And I think that that's something that feminism has slightly killed off is women who want to stay at home and want to be the stay-at-home mum or stay-at-home wife i think that a lot of that's like we well, can't do that you gotta have a job you gotta and i think that's wrong i think that there is a bit of dialogue that needs to be said there and although it's uh, you've just got to read it to understand but i think that we need to respect women's choices and the choice to stay at home as well as the choice to go to work both very valid choices let people decide next we have tom stoppard's rose and crowns and gildenstern are dead i am in the process of reading this, as you can see, I've got one of my little colour-coded things in there. So, yeah, I'll let you know. Head of Tesman by um, Cordelia Lynn after Henrik Ibsen. Henrik, Henrik. Dyslexia, for the win. I saw this at Chish's Festival. It was amazing. I loved it. It is a more modern take on Hedda Gabler, like a different take. Next up, we've got Anton Chekhov's Seagull. Again, a very good classic. I love it. I've also got Anton Chekhov's the Seagull in the new version by Peter Gill, which I don't think I've read this copy, actually. Now we're moving on to... I've got some more notebooks here. These are notebooks um, from when I've been doing plays, and these are my notes. We've got just the tip of the tongue by Peter Brook. I haven't read that. A lot of the theory books I haven't read. I'm more daunted by bigger books, especially with the dyslexia. I find it quite difficult um, and the ADHD to stay connected and read those. That's always a difficult one for me. If you are an actor and you are struggling with life, read this. This is An Attitude for Acting, How to Survive and Thrive as an actor by Andrew Tidmarsh and Dr. Tara, Tara Schwart. Um, Andrew Tidmarsh taught me at RADA, he's brilliant. I think this is such a good, it's a workbook really, but it's it's very good in the way that it gets you to think about things differently. The Master of Movement by Rudolf Laban. Uta Hagen's Respect for Acting. This I've read the whole way through and I loved it. This is by D. Cannon, it's in-depth acting. It's very interesting. It tells you a lot of what you know, 
but it's very reaffirming of what you know and there are some really good tidbits in there and things you should be doing as an actor very useful actioning and how to do it if you don't know what actioning is basically you put an action to each word i believe i haven't done this for a while i'm not a big fan of actioning personally it's not my thing i'm one of those people who gets a script has to go at it and hopes for the best <laughs> i do a bit of research but i like to let the character make their own decisions which sounds very silly but that's how i've always done it and i don't learn my lines straight away i don't like to lower my lines already because i feel like i'm already pre-deciding things for the character and i don't think that's for me it doesn't work anyway if i if i learn them before i've tried that and i didn't i did not actually feel as free funnily enough and i think there's an element of of like oh my god if you don't know your lines like a two week two or three weeks completely beforehand i mean obviously you know the gist of them but don't know them perfectly save the cat by blake snyder now this is about screenwriting and it is fascinating it really makes you think about how its stories come together um and i think as well for theater not just film this is brilliant if you haven't read it go and pick up a copy and i will link my review down below samford meisner on acting Meisner is a love of mine. I used to hate it and now I love it. I think you've got to go through that love-hate relationship with Meisner. Um, it's very harrowing and very... It gets in your soul. <laughs> that is all I can say. Next up is Playing Shakespeare by John Button. I love this. Shakespeare, anything Shakespeare and I am away. I am, I am a happy bunny. Um, sorry, this is my wardrobe and I'm leaning up against it. This is the one that the DVD came with and... If you've got the DVD in it, you can't do that. And I like to be able to do that to books. I can't remember how far I've got with this. For me, it was... Oh, yeah, I do, I do know how far I got. Because I've highlighted stuff in it. I like to highlight things because it, it means that when I go back, I can find the bits that were interesting to me. It, it takes a lot of the guesswork out. I like this. Anything Shakespeare... I think Shakespeare is still relevant today. I think his work is universal. Uh, you know, his themes and everything that he goes through that everything the characters go through are still relevant today. We're still mums and daughters and lovers and everything. And that is still a relevant feeling. You know, the themes are still relevant. And that is something that I really love. Now, I don't know why, but Konstantin Stanislavski's books have been split up. Konstantin Stanislavski and Actual Pledge. As you can see, I've got my... Yee little things in there. Um, I've also got Creating a Role and Building a Character. I haven't read the last two. Um, again, I'm not going to be annoyed at myself for not having finished certain things i'm dyslexic and i struggle so i'm not gonna have a go at myself for that next up is declan donnelly the actor on the target this was recommended to me by a friend and i believe i've read some of it i have read some of it i know i've read some of it but not all of it so again a lot of these are on my list this is a new one that i got recently this is balancing at behind the scenes at national theater by nicholas heitner um nicholas heitner was ahead of the national when i did my show at the national um so that was exciting and i wanted to know more about backstage at national theater even though i've been backstage at national theater. next up is the globe guide to shakespeare this is a, a massive book like this is an omnibus i haven't read it yet the thinnest paper and i'm like what annoys me is that books like this is that i know i'm gonna want to highlight and i won't be able to highlight because gonna go through the pages i don't know why this is a is this like an actual book oh no this is a play this is a play you know like a real book for a minute i put what play in my theory book section so this is just a little red herring this is swept by lynn nottage i didn't even know i had that so i haven't read it <laughs> uh let's pop that in the correct section next up is the forest and the field changing theater in a changing world by chris good i haven't read that either i have a lot of books that i haven't read and i'm really sorry so you want to be a playwright by tim fountain I, have I, I did I did I read this I think I've read it but I'm not sure um I might have to go through it again because the thing is, is like, I went through a phase when I damaged spines and didn't give a shit and now I really care about the spines of my books so I can't tell if I've read it or not <laughs> facing the fear by Bella Merlin I have read part of this it's very interesting especially if you've got stage fright or you suffer from some form of it one that I have most thoroughly read and love and have highlighted all over is Brutus and Other Heroines playing Shakespeare's Roles for Women by Harriet Walter and I love this. Um, if you haven't read it and you're a woman, go read it. It's amazing. Next up is The Rules of Acting by Michael Simkins. I've not read this yet, but I think it was the first page that really got me. What was it? There was a there was something in it that got me. Yeah, it was just it was just I haven't read it, but again I have it. <laughs> Now, this I have read, and I read it thoroughly. The Excellent Audition Guide by Andy Johnson. Very interesting if you're first auditioning for drama schools. 
um, you will learn a lot. So you want to go to drama school by Helen Freeman. Again, read that if you're auditioning for drama school, very good. Singing and the Actor by Gillian Hayes. I believe I was recommended this by my singing teacher, actually. Yeah, because I am, uh, if you don't know, I have my um, diploma in musical theatre singing with the London College of Music. So I'm technically sort of qualified to teach, I guess. So I do know a lot about singing. I know a lot about the voice. I know about looking after my voice. So um, for me, this is interesting. Uh, I'm tempted to go and do the next level up at some point, but it's very expensive. So that might be a little while. Next up is the Actors Art and Craft, um, which is the, the William Esper teaches the Miser Technique. Um, so this is by William Esper and Damon DiMarco. I want to say I got part way through this. I think I did because it's a floppy book. If it's a floppy book, wiggle wiggle woo. You, you saw my last video. Then yes, it's very good. <laughs> Next up is all my Shakespeare books. Now, if you want a really good version of Shakespeare books, the new Cambridge Shakespeare editions are my favourite. They have enough room in the margins to make notes. I like the forwards, I like the detail, and I like the translations at the bottom. I think they're brilliant, and I wouldn't go for a different version, personally. So yeah, I got item you. Well, you can tell because the rest of my bookshelf just like fell. I've got the sonnets because I think the sonnets are important. Henry V, Romeo and Juliet from their old edition. Cymbeline, Imogen. <laughs> Much to do about nothing because that's one of my favourites. I should rather hear my dog bark to crow than a man's where he loves me. Actually, that's a lie. I like it when Ed says he loves me. It's sweet. <laughs> As you like it. Again, I've done some research into that one. Midsummer Night's Dream. It's got notes in that one. Hamlet. It's got notes in that one. <laughs> Othello. It's got like a whole page of notes in that one. You can't tell I love my Shakespeare. Two Gentlemen of Verona, again a load of notes in that one. King Henry the Fourth Part One, Henry the Fourth Part Two, so I like Henry. And that is it, I think. Put those back. Oh, too much Shakespeare. No, you can't have too much Shakespeare, let's be real here. The battery finally died. Let's move that back over a little bit. That is my theatre bookshelf. Aside from the books that are over there that I'm just going to grab. <laughs> okay, so the other ones here are Poppy and George by Diane Samuels. A really lovely love story. I like that one. BU21 by Stuart Slade. And The One by Vicky Jones. I haven't read that yet. This one's a theory book. Harriet Walter, Other People's Shoes. Thoughts on acting. Again, I love Harriet Walter. This is one I'm currently reading. And the current play I'm reading is Lungs by Duncan Macmillan. Um, if you don't know, this is March's book for Theatre Book Club. Go ahead and grab a copy. We are gonna be chatting about this. Go and follow Theatre Book Club on Instagram because that's gonna be making more updates. As you can tell, I have a lot of theatre books in a very unorganized manner. It isn't organized at all, this. It is organized in my head. You know when you have your own organizational system. But yeah, I believe that's most of them. I have got some shit, old, old Shakespeare books up here but they are very carefully perched. And then I've got a 1940s version of Complete Plays by Bernard Shaw, which I really love. Yeah, so those that is my theatre bookshelf tour. I'm excited to have done this. This is something I've wanted to do for a little while. You guys want to say theatre-y. So I thought I'd show you currently what is on my bookshelf and what is a good idea to read, I guess. At least things I've read that you might not have thought to read and might want to read or watch because I've got lots of DVDs. Thank you for watching, guys. And um, don't forget to subscribe, hit the subscribe button wherever it be. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and all the other social mediums. <laughs> and I will see you through a lens sometime very, very soon. Alright, guys, bye!